you find blog posts or something like that that compare Scala to other languages, in particular Java, one of the things that is very frequently uh, used in their comparisons, especially when talking about how Scala can be less verbose, are case classes. You know enough now that we can talk about kind of what a case class is and what it brings uh, to you. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to create another class. Uh, we can make this be a vec 2, 2D, I'll call it CC for case class. And you would declare it just like a normal class, except you put the keyword case in front of it. By putting the keyword case in front of it, it provides several things for you. First off, when we put data inside of here, they are automatically vowels. So I don't have to type the keyword val to get these things. I get that automatically. Uh, in addition, there are automatically added to the class a number of methods that, that we really haven't dealt with much. We'll talk more about some of them in the next chapter, and then some of them are kind of beyond the scope of what we want to do. But a method called hash code, a method called equals, uh, two string. So that the equals method, for example, will make it so if I have two vectors, v1 and v2, right now, if I do that check, unless it's the same object, well, for this class, if I do a check between two vectors, even if they have the same components, unless they are the exact same vector, the same object in memory, they won't be equal. Whereas for a case class, they would be. If the x and the y components are equal, the two things will say that they are equal when you do a check for equality. That's handy. Also, when you print them out, we haven't printed one of these out, but let's do a print line of v3, for example. And if we run this, that's what it currently prints like. Hmm, that doesn't look so good. So how about I'm going to take, and I'm going to copy this code, and I'm going to put that inside of main args is an array array of string and we're going to change these to now this is unhappy right now because we don't have our methods it turns out that because these methods so case classes should normally be used to declare immutable classes. And so our current immutable class, things should work quite well here. We need to make it so that it takes and returns. The CC version. There we go. Now if I run this one, see what it prints out? Vec2D CC34. It's a much nicer print. That's because the toString method is, is uh, included for us. Another thing you might note, over here, I was able to get rid of new because we put an apply method in the companion object. I haven't put an apply method in the companion object, but I still don't need new. That's provided in a case class. When you make a case class, it automatically creates a companion object and puts some methods in there, including an apply method that can be used for constructing the uh, the objects. There's also a method in there called unapply, which is used for pattern matching, so that you can do matches. You know, you can have a match and case on your case classes. This is really why they have that name. You can't do that nicely with the standard class. And that that type of code is does not uh, come automatically. Oh. Uh, the case class also has a really nice method in it called copy. And the copy method probably would have been most useful in our uh, student examples that we played with originally. Um, because we had the ability in our student to, actually here we go, there's our student. Our student, we wound up making, uh, 
except this would have been for our immutable student because the case class is good for being immutable. We had all of these places where we were basically making copies of the current student, but we changed something in here. And it turns out that one of the methods that's provided in a case class is a method called copy. And so the, what the copy method does is, well, as the name implies, it makes a copy. It takes all of its arguments by name and they have default values. So anything that you don't pass in will wind up getting the same value that it had before. Anything that you do pass in will wind up taking on that new value. So for example, I can say v3.copy and just say y equals 99. This makes a copy of v3. It uses the original value for x, but gives us a different value for y. Once again, in our immutable student, if we were to make this into a case class, we could re replace this big new immutable student with just calling copy, and then we could say quizzes equals grade cons quizzes. We wouldn't have to specify all the others because they would come by default. So that gives you some of the things that are in case classes. There's a few more that kind of go beyond what we know to be able to talk about, but they're a nice little feature of Scala. And if you are intending to make a class that is immutable, uh, you might consider making it a case class uh, so that you get some of these additional elements for free. But you should only do it for something that is immutable. If it is not immutable, this is a very bad idea and you really shouldn't do it.